All you need is the right amount of hate, the labeling and the branding. You're not like one of us. No one is immune. Anita, you don't look like an Aryan girl. You got gypsy blood in you? Don't deny it. I got a patch for you. Jacob, I got a yellow patch for you. Your last name's Rosenberg, right? Elaine, I heard you spouting Marxist rhetoric on the debate team. I got a patch for you. And for me, I wear this pink triangle. Because I'm gay. Anyone who didn't fit into Hitler's Aryan ideal had to be cut off from the master race. So he came up with a final solution. A genocidal game of tag. Jews, communists, Marxists, homosexuals, all labeled and stripped of their own individual identity. Punishment for nonconformity was exile and extermination. Carla. Carla. I didn't mean to freak you guys out. Come on, Mr. D. You can't dump a bomb like that and act like it's no big deal. You got the floor, Mr. Warner. You got something to say? Go for it. Miss Santos. Can we talk more about you and this case? Enough about me. Let's get back to work. You brought it up. Not to get into discussion of my personal lifestyle, but to illustrate a point. If you had lived in Nazi Germany, you would have been killed just because you're gay. That's right. Shipped off to Auschwitz or Treblinka or Belzac. Fifteen million Jews, Poles, communists, Marxists, leftists, gays, all perished in the death camps. It's horrible. But you know, that, could, that can never happen today. I mean, not here, not, not to you. Oh, yeah, sure. There's no gay bashing going on in the good old USA. And, and what, skinheads trashing synagogues? That's just a bad rap? All right. Okay, let's go with that. Intolerance ebbs and flows with the country's prosperity. At the time that Hitler came to power, Germany was mired in a depression. It cost an entire week's wages just to buy a single loaf of bread. So who are you going to blame for that? You blame the enemies within, the countercultures, the Jews, the communists, the gays. I never thought about you that way. Oh, yeah, he was a hunk when you thought he was straight, but now what, the ick factor kicks in? No, it doesn't. All right, guys, guys, we're getting off track here. All I'm trying to say is that I've never met a gay person before. What is this, Pine Valley, the land time forgot? Odds are you met a lot of gay people before. Or gays on training wheels. You didn't know because most people don't advertise it. But Hitler took the guesswork out for him. Came up with these cunning little patches. And the Gestapo was the relentless machine that was an equal opportunity destroyer. Look, it took a lot of guts for him to come out and say what he did today. I don't have a problem with it. All right, listen to me. If you guys want to talk about... What did you call it, Anita? This gay thing? I suggest you go home and you talk to your parents, or you go talk to your guidance counselor, or you go to church, or you go to the library and oh, do what hey, you do. Hey, hey, how come we can't talk about it now? Because this is a history class, Mr. Warner, and I'm getting paid big bucks to teach it. All right, guys, that is the bell, which means vacation time. You're home for the holidays, all right? So listen, remember to write a paper if you want for extra credit, okay? Happy Hanukkah, Merry Christmas. Uh, Feliz Navidad. Take care, you guys. Happy Merry Christmas. Or, whatever. Thank you, Laura. Same to you. So, what do you say? We go to the faculty lounge and have some of the vice principal's virgin eggnog. You know, when I picked these up at the Holocaust Museum, I had uh, no idea what that one stood for. Well, if I were a Jew, I would have ID'd myself as being Jewish. I'm not ashamed of who I am. Well, Michael, you opened a heck of a can of worms today. Well, the bigger the can, the more questions they ask. It'll help them understand that we are all part of living history. I 
just not sure they're going to get the lesson. I mean, if you identified yourself with one of the millions of Jews who were killed in the world, I, I don't think that they would go tell their parents that you were Jewish. There are places in this world and in this country that it's not cool to be Jewish. And it's not safe to be gay. It wasn't safe to tell my kids that I'm a homosexual, but it was the truth. Well, it's too much truth. You could see it. Carla couldn't handle it. The rest of the kids, they didn't know how to react. Well, you didn't know how to react either when I first told you. Your eyes just about popped out of your head, but you got over it. Completely different. I'm not one of your students. I'm not 16. You're incredibly naive if you think it's pulled out on the subject. I can't believe it. Mr. Reeves is gay. What is... I don't disagree with the message. I think it's very powerful. But to cast yourself as the messenger... Well, who better? These kids, they look up to me. They trust me because I'm a good teacher. And I talk to them straight. Pardon the pun. But really, I am not a gay man who happens to teach history as some kind of a side gig. I am a history teacher who just happens to be gay. I understand that. But don't you think to bring up the issue of your sexuality detracts from the, the lesson that you're trying to get across? No, I think in this case it enhances it. In any case, why should my gayness be any more of an issue than somebody's straightness? Well, think about it. Laura said it. The, uh, the ick factor. I mean, 16-year-olds feel awkward enough about their sexuality. They gag if you suggest their parents have sex. I just can't help but feel that you've given them more information than they can handle. Dixie, someone was forced to wear this badge as a badge of dishonor. I look at it as a badge of courage. And I do not regret wearing it. Mr. Delaney, there's a fight. Scott and Bobby, hurry! Put it out. Break it up, you guys. Well, what's going on here? How did this thing start? Huh? Anita? Laura? Nobody, huh? Nobody wants to tell me. Are you hurt? Are you okay? Fine. Are you all right? Yeah. You sure? What is wrong with you guys? It's Christmas time. What happened to peace on earth, goodwill to men, and all that stuff? Now go home, all right? Wait, you gonna single me out? I didn't start this. Bobby, go home! I want you to go home now! Look, if this had anything to do with what I said in class... You have to do that. I'm sorry. Just stay away from me. Stay the hell away from me. at your nose, you like Ah, old King Cole grandson. <laughs> <laughs> Merry Christmas, everybody. <laughs> Come on, gather around, help trim the tree. I need a volunteer for the cranberries. Oh, smells good. Ah, uh, I'm making a bush Noel. That's fancy for Yule Long. <laughs> it's a key for Christmas tradition. Honey, where did I put the tinsel, huh? Well, it should be right there next to the garland there. Oh, that's my cue to kick into chestnuts roasting on an open fire. You can forget it. Michael, look, um, I can't stick around because Janet and Pierce are waiting for me, but I just want you to know that I'm with Kevin. I mean, it really takes guts to just be yourself, and I don't have a problem with that. That's good to hear. Um, Miss Fargate, Miss Kiefer, your gifts are in my room. No peeking uh, until Christmas, okay? Do you need a ride, Penny? Uh, no, I've got bus fare. Joy and Noel. Bye. Bye-bye. You okay? Sure. Come on, I'm your friend. Don't have to pretend with me. Been there, done that. What Scott did hurt. Yeah, he's, he's young, you know. We've all been there. Listen, um... I'm a bit nearsighted, but my hearing's very good. 
I just heard Dixie ask if you're all right. Uh, I'm fine, Myrtle. No. Never calm a calm. Well, something happened at school today, and it kind of threw my students off guard. Care to try it out on us? Well, without really thinking about it, I told my students I was gay. You know, I was talking to the kids about the Holocaust, and I tried to use myself as an example, and they just, they freaked out. I mean, naturally, they all started asking questions. Right, I try to keep the discussion academic, but I'm not big on talking about my personal life anyway, inside or outside of class. But they wanted details. Once I opened that closet door, there was no way I was going to get that thing shut. It started as a lesson in persecution, and suddenly it became a practical demonstration, and I was the floor model. I don't know. I just totally blew their minds. Well, kids need to explore their feelings, and a classroom is a perfect, safe place for them to, you know, check out those evil twins, uh, intolerance and bigotry. Well, I'm really interested to see how everybody's parents react to this revelation. Michael, dear, you might be very surprised. You know, the, the people in this town, they're, they're good, nice, educated people. I, I mean, now look at me. I'm an ex carly griffin. <laughs> yes, I, I am. And I, I've been here for a long time. And these people are my friends. You're going to be fine. Well, I hope so, because Pine Valley's really starting to feel like home. Well, home's where you feel free to be yourself. And, well, for what it's worth, I think you did the right thing. to go. I've got a mountain bike and a Tyranno Ninja Zord. Oh, to do my Christmas. <laughs> You're all welcome to come by the Martins. We're uh, going to have a big down-home family kind of celebration. Thank you, Donna. <laughs> You're welcome. There'll be good food and good cheer. No one will be turned away. Well, maybe I'll stop by with the ladies. Come by for some grog later <laughs> on. That'd be great. And pass the word on to Gloria, okay? The more the merrier. Hey, you've been a great friend. Thanks for your support. Okay. You're very welcome. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. To you, too. <laughs> Merry Christmas, ladies. Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas. See you. Bye.